Oh! What it do, Ski? It's your boy, Fable34, and today I'm here with my reaction video to Stargate SG-1. This one is Season 1, Episode 18. How's it going, everybody? So, we're not going to do a lengthy intro. We're just going to dive right in to the goodness. So, let's see what's popping this time around with the SG team. Will there be multiple SG teams? Will Hammond uh, be in a, in, a chip, in a chippy mood? Let's find out. Because if you enjoyed this one, then definitely be sure to smack that like button and subscribe if you have not already. Again, links in the description down below if you guys want to get the full under raw reactions. And uh, with that being said, let's yab da dab do it. Right, Deuce? All right. Incoming traveler. traveler. Off world. Boost? Is it Apophis? Is he on some shit? No. Where are Colonel O'Neill, Captain Carter? They could have not been more than two meters behind. Oh no. I do not know. They got lost in the sauce. In the void they go. Got some pretty good openers. I'm starting it. They were some distance away, but we appeared to be surrounded. Colonel O'Neill ordered us to lay down cover fire while Daniel Jackson dialed home. General Hammond, I believe they should have made it through the gate. This isn't chippy and cheery at all. Try to stay put, sir. I think your leg's broken. No, oh. my leg's definitely broken. <sighs> Daniel must have misdialed. Misdialed? <laughs> this is job not Man, to misdial. This is the wrong number. He's not here, sir. Neither is Teal'c. I think we're inside a deep crevasse of a glacier. We're in trouble, sir. Oh, nuts. Yeah, this is not a good look. Where's the DHD? Can't find that either. We're in trouble. We're in trouble. Okay, let's see how this goes. Them stuck in a, a cave in the cold. Now I see that one Fresh Prince episode. I, I think it's set. You think it's set? Sorry, sir, but I've never done this before in my life. Oh, God. Is this your first broken bone? This would be... 19th? Nine. No, nine. If you count skull fractures. I'm sorry, Colonel. I'm doing the best I can. I know you are, Captain. Can you just be done? <laughs> almost there. Almost no, there. No, you're there, Captain. You're there. That's a great split. Stop. Stop. <laughs> oh, no, Jack. Uh, what got you through it? <sighs> Sarah. My wife. I'm down for more Jack backstory. We are going to get out of here. That's an order. How's the splint feel? Captain? He knows she's not. <laughs> she's you not sure. Believe me. And help me out. Okay, as long as there's no enemies, I think we're good. Surviving episode. Jack and Sam. They did not follow. Yes, they did. They were right behind us. That doesn't make any sense. I concur. They said you might be able to climb out of here. Found it! I'm DHD! Plus. Oh, it's frozen. I think I cracked a rib, too. Oh, my something? God. I was afraid you'd try to put a split on it. We'll assume they made it back to Earth. We'll start sending search parties. To where? Where would they begin? They have no idea where we are. Yeah. Even if all SG teams started searching right now, the mathematical probability of them even- Captain. Sam, have some faith, jeez. I mean, she's not wrong though. The situation is definitely grave. And poor Jack, literally every other episode, it's him getting compromised in some capacity. Turns into Neanderthal, age accelerated, has a clone, breaks a leg. We're only 18 episodes deep. We got a lot of seasons. <laughs> He's gonna die and come back a couple times, I'm sure. Yeah, he did die too, actually. <laughs> they all did. Alright, here we go. Wally's out. This is not giving me good vibes. The rescue mission is scrubbed. I didn't know you could cook. I can't, but my melted ice is to die. <laughs> I figure it had to have been the attack on P4A771. The gate itself was probably struck by enough energy during the firefight to influence the direction of the matter stream before we reached the other side. Colonel? Jack's not looking good. We must have emerged through a stargate relatively close to Earth in the gate network. If the SG rescue teams reached the same conclusion, it could significantly narrow their search. That's good news. Daniel, it is possible it. they may have perished within the wormhole. Well, we have to narrow it down. Serpent card. I guess he didn't make it. It's not okay. This is P4A771. Redirected itself here or anywhere along here. You're suggesting we search all these worlds? Now they could be badly hurt, in which case we will not have to search far from the Stargates themselves. Yep. I think we owe it to them to try. <laughs> DHD secured. It's now or never. I always preferred now to never. <laughs> oh! Yo, 
Oh, Thor, where you at? We need you right now, fam. Yeah, Jack's gonna be out of commission for a little bit. Dig down to the panel on the DHD, I can fix it. Negative. It'll be there in the morning. God. Oh my god, I feel so Not bad. <sighs> I have formally reported Colonel O'Neill and Captain Carter as missing in action. I'm missing something. To sleep with broken ribs when someone's lying on you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you should have thought about that one a little bit more. <laughs> um, Colonel. It's my sidearm, I swear. <laughs> I mean, if anything, this would be a decent episode of calling some favors, too. But then, you know what? Like, we just did that last episode. Broken leg may already be frostbitten, I can't tell. I've been trying to warm it up with the last of our cooking sternum, but that's about it. I don't know what the game plan here is. Watch it. It's time to go to plan B. You take the rest of the supplies and climb out of here. Kip, make it work. Yes, sir. That gave me goosebumps. Oh, boy. <laughs> requires medical attention. The fuck? I'm calling the search off. <gasps> what? This was the last of the planners to fit your theory, Doctor. We're gonna go on one last solo mission. We have to. Reset. Why didn't I think? We're gonna shut it all off and turn it on again. Survey says. Oh, come on. <laughs> this episode is so hopeless. I was thinking that I must be missing something, and now I just realized. We ruled out a world we shouldn't have. Captain. Plan B. No, sir. Follow my order. Please. Yes, sir. Open the damn gate, Daniel. Open it. Or What's your point, Doctor? What if there's a second Stargate? On Earth? Here? Oh! What if this surge caused the wormhole to jump from one Stargate to another here. You know what's crazy? I was gonna say, what if they're on a Stargate on Earth? But I'm like, wait, I don't think that's a thing. I don't think we're gonna go and do that. Fuck, I wish I said it. Ah, damn it. On Earth? Yes. Because they also notably didn't go outside of the surface. And they didn't go to the surface of you. But what if the second gate doesn't have those? Would it shake enough to indicate its location on a seismometer? Damn right it would. What happens when you dial your own phone number? Wrong person to ask. What happens when you dial your own <laughs> phone number? You get a busy signal. Exactly. What else could cause a vibration like that unless they were trying to dial home? Oh my god. Mount Everest? Where are we at? We got it! Antarctica! The timing of the event is to the second! Order McMurdo Station to begin a search of those coordinates now! Let's go. It's an ice planet. It's all there is, as far as the eye can see. Colonel! I'm coming oh down. God. Don't break your leg now, Sam. Oh, come on! Come on! I know. It's all right. You can sleep now. They really play this to the last second, eh? It was an honor serving with you too, Colonel. Yeah, they, they're gonna get this end the episode off with the star getting opening her the helicopter. She's gonna be okay, you're gonna you're gonna be okay. As is Colonel O'Neill. Let's get them in the chopper! General. You came through the Stargate for us. Not exactly, Captain. It's also big information too, now. We got the double bubble, two gates. 
Oh, that was great. Wow. And that was my reaction video to Stargate SG-1 Season 1, Episode 18. This one was titled Solitudes. And I gotta say, I actually thought this was a well-done episode of SG-1. Now, there's a couple things which, which I which, which stood out to me about this episode. Uh, first and foremost was just how hopeless and um, just dire their situation was. I love how they split the team up off of this really cool premise. We've sort of done this before where, where some of them made them, some of them didn't or whatever it was. But this time around... I thought they went about it in a little bit of a unique way where it was, it was completely hopeless. It was like one in a, you know, like the, the chances of them finding both Carter and O'Neill, it, it, it would be impossible. And I loved how they sort of pitted um, Jack. So they gave Jack this really great backstory of him this one time where he had, he had a lot of faith and Samantha obviously being the very uh, overthinking analytical person she is. Um, would just sort of put two and two together and be like, yeah, this situation is hopeless. We're not going to make it. And it was only by having faith, the great reveal that this was actually Earth and they'd be able to be saved. So, um, and on top of that, we also had this really big, I guess, world building idea that from a world, pers from a world building perspective, we've got a second Stargate. Now that's massive. And who put that in Stargate? Was that necessarily uh, the Gwauld? I'm not entirely sure. Was it some other species? Um, does it maybe have to do with other races that we have or haven't encountered yet? I'm not entirely sure. But the fact that we have another Stargate in uh, Antarctica uh, is sure to get sure to have uh, large implications later down the line. I know Hammond totally looked at the Stargate and he's like, "Go fuck this shit up." So, so I thought that was brilliant. Also, I thought both uh, Jack and uh, and Samantha really carried this episode, and uh, neither one of them dropped the ball. In my opinion, I thought uh, I thought Jack was on top of his game, even though he was in such a dire situation. His his his, his quips, you know, his one-liners, um, but also in the more serious vulnerable moments when he's revealing that he's bleeding his facial reactions and i love how this episode was just very dark and dim uh it really complemented uh the themes and the, just the tone of this episode with them just being in this cave and it's funny that i mentioned that the fresh prince the fresh prince episode because it actually <laughs> was on earth too so like it's funny how like they were stuck in a cave obviously it's on earth it's, it's, it's a sitcom um but similarities there still wish i had said it but it doesn't really matter um still i think this episode was actually really well done thought performance wise i really was I was really feeling uh, some of those emotional moments with Carter and uh, O'Neill later on, later down the line. The coolest part about watching Teal navigate that was this. It just sort of showed the. It just it, to me at least it showed the growth not just of Teal having to deal with Hammond without you know having his third party you know without having Jack sort of step in for him. You know he's Teal sort of stepping in on his own now, telling making sort of calls and demands, telling him what we should and shouldn't do. So I think that was a really great progression, slightly for Teal. Also, just if you look at the SG team, like. In 18 episodes, we've gone from just starting up the Stargate now to uh, deploying multitudes of tons of teams uh, left, right, and center in a, in a strategic manner to try and find our team. So uh, I uh, I, thought, I was pretty impressed with how the SG team was moving now. And again, like I said, with the second Stargate, uh, this is really going to, at least I'm guessing, is going to change the game up a bit. So I thought it was funny how I think if, if Captain, if, if Carter was, if, it, if we had swapped Carter with, I don't know, I feel like it would have been resolved much quicker. Uh, so it was almost fun seeing, you know, I guess the less techie guys, um, the less techie of the group figure out how to get out of this situation and um shout out to daniel came clutch with his 4 a.m wake at 4 a.m uh but yeah was really impressed with the directing and uh the performances this episode just the tone just the hopelessness to it how they played off that really well um how they sort of paced and escalated you know from him just having a broken leg to making jokes about it to then internal bleeding obviously being super serious so yeah um, pretty, this was actually a really solid episode of the show, but guys, what do you think about this one? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, if you enjoyed this one, then definitely be sure to smack that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And with that being said, guys, I'll catch y'all in the next one.